So this is one of our student queries. So he asks, uh, what is a receptive field? And what is the difference between a receptive field and effective receptive field? Again, uh, this is a term that we have not used as part of our course videos. But I'll explain it. The concepts behind this are very simple that we've already covered in convolutional neural networks chapter of ours in the deep learning section or in the deep learning module. So uh, receptive field, the term receptive field itself comes from neuroscience, but its application in the context of CNNs is as follows. Imagine if I have an image like this, right? Imagine in the very first layer, let's assume I have a convolutional filter, right? Or I have a convolutional kernel that is five cross five. Of course, what I'll have here is I'll not have just one kernel. I'll have multiple kernels like this. But let's look at it from the perspective of just one kernel. So this kernel is five cross five. So a receptive field, first let me define this term, then I'll discuss about the effective receptive field, right? So a receptive field basically is nothing but at any point, how, do, how does this convolution operation work? At any point, I'll take this convolution filter or a convolutional kernel, I'll pass it through various parts of the image and for each part I generate an output, right? So a receptive field basically is nothing but it is that part of the image which the convolutional kernel operates on at a given point of time, right? So this, this field, so for example, at a given point of time, this convolutional kernel will see a five cross five bunch of pixels in this image. Again, these pixels could be colored pixels or grayscale pixels. If it's color pixels, I'll have RGB in the tensor, right? Otherwise, I'll just have a simple image with grayscale values. So a receptive field of this convolutional kernel at a given time t will be these five cross five section of the image that is being convoluted using this convolution kernel to generate one value in the output image. Of course, this phi cross phi will keep changing. At a, at a different point of time, I might have an another phi cross phi region in the image, which will be convoluted with this kernel, and then another output will be generated, and that output will be roughly somewhere here, right? So receptive field basically is that part of the image which the convolutional kernel at a given time t is being convoluted with. Very simple. Now, what is, the, what, is the, what is an effective receptive field? Okay, this is a slightly more intricate concept, but simple. Okay, so let's assume, so again, I'll try to explain with the example of just one convolutional kernel, but in reality, you'll have multiple convolutional kernels like this, whose weights we learn through backpropagation, as we've explained in our course videos, right? Uh, in the CNN chapter specifically. So let's assume I have this input image, I have this convolution kernel. Again, let's look at it only from one, one kernel perspective. This single kernel will generate an output. Now, again, remember that let's assume this kernel is on the first layer. Now, this is the output of the first layer, right? In reality, what happens? We'll have multiple kernels and what we get here is a tensor. But let's look at it only from this perspective. Now, Imagine I have an other convolution layer after this. In my second layer, let's assume, is also a convolution layer where the size of my convolution kernel is three cross three, right? At, 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 uh, in the second stage. Now, if, because this is three cross three, what happens? A three cross three region of this output image. This is the output of the first layer. This is not the original image. My original image is in the input layer, right? So what happens? This three cross three at a given time will be convoluted with this kernel and an output will be generated. Similarly, at a different time, another three cross three will be convoluted and so on and so forth. Now here, the receptive field in this image, look at this, in this output image after the first layer, the receptive field in this image for this kernel at a given time t is just these three cross three pixels. But the effective receptive field is that part of the original image whose pixels are being indirectly convoluted with this. Look at this, this is very important, right? So let me let me just erase this so as to avoid confusion, okay? The key idea is this, this single value was generated by using a phi cross phi region here, this phi cross phi got convoluted with this and this single pixel value was generated. Its next pixel was generated by being convoluted with another phi cross phi. Again, again, this depends on your stride and other parameters, right? This third one was generated again by taking another five cross five part of the image being convoluted with this and the third one was generated. 
similarly so on so forth so effectively this kernel or this convolution filter is being generated so look at this directly it's being it's being convolute uh, we are applying the convolution operation with just these nine pixels in this output image but if you look at it from the perspective of the input image there is a much larger area there is a much larger area here of pixels which are indirectly being which are, which are which are contributing to this 3 cross 3 because this whole thing was convoluted with 5 cross 5 to generate this 3 cross 3 this much bigger image right so if you look at the effective receptive field of this kernel its effective receptive field is this whole part of the image which has indirectly or directly contributed to these uh, to these pixels in this output image which are which which is being convoluted at a given time right so a receptive field basically simply speaking is that region of the image which a kernel is being operated on at a given time t effective receptive field becomes important when you have a multi-layered convolution neural network where in the second layer third layer fourth layer etc the effective region of the original image whose pixels have directly or indirectly contributed to this convolution kernel or which are being indirectly which how, why is this indirectly being contributed because this first got convoluted with this to generate this and this is now getting convoluted so all these pixels are contributing or indirectly being convoluted through this kernel so that, that's why the effective receptive field is much larger in the original image that's all it's a very simple concept the terminology is something that we have not used as part of the course videos but it is simple you can find this in most textbooks and i'm glad our student asked because i believe he read it in a blog or in a research paper and he could not understand the concept is very very simple